her ability to infuse Yoruba music with house music has termed her the queen of Afro house. Combined with her hypnotizing dance move, she's on track for global domination. My guest today is Niniola. Hi, girl. Hey, Bola. How are you? Good to see you. Too. you. How so are you? I, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, and I'm know, really excited know, that we're doing I this know. interview. Thank you so much. Like, your talent is it's pretty intense. Thank you. And it's interesting because you know I talked about the since hypnotizing dance moves. Mm -hmm. But I was watching some of your Project Fame videos. Mm -hmm. And I specifically was watching your Project Fame performance for Baby Boy. Oh, Baby and Boy. And it was interesting because it was like, I was like, wait, this is not the Niniola dancing that I know now. <laughs> so, like, let's talk a little bit about your journey from okay. being on a music reality show. Mm -hmm. I know that wasn't even your first one. You've done X Factor as well. Mm -hmm. And now where you are. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like for you? My experience has really shaped me as an artist and as a person. Mm. Um, I jumped from one reality TV show, singing TV show to the other. I got my fair share of no's, you're not good enough, they will tell you to your face, mm -hmm. you're singing rubbish. Yeah. You understand, you can't sing, you can't do this. And I just told myself, I will get better. I want to be so good that I will own my ground. How I'm going to do it, I don't know, but I'll mm. just keep working. You know, I joined a band. Um, my very first competition was in the church, somewhere in Aja, and I was living in Isolo. Mm. So I was going for audition all the way from Isolo to Aja. How long, old were long. you then? Yeah, I'm, I was, um, how old? Ugh. I remember I was pretty young. You were still in secondary school? After sec no, secondary school. Okay. No, after secondary school. And um, it was a church program, mm. and I went there. And the criteria was to recite a Bible verse. And I'm like, oh. um, the Lord is our shepherd. Everybody knows that one, yeah. you know. And I got, I got in and eventually I came maybe sixth or tenth. I was very angry. I stormed mm. out of the church because I was like, ah, I'm very good now. Yeah. They told me in school, you know, at home that, you know, I'm a superstar. So who's telling me something different? And then I went for West African Idols. Okay. So you even did that one Ah, time. my sister, wow. I did it. <laughs> you know, I went there, I was ready. I remember I was wearing um, short hair, blonde, with my um, belt, big belt. Mm -hmm. Then I was looking fine, I was shy, ready to take over the world. <laughs> you know, I sang my song and um, the judges were not impressed. You know, Dan Foster was one of the judges. Okay. <laughs> and um, some Ghanaian lady and Dede. Yeah. Um, Dan Foster gave me a no, the lady gave me a no, but um, Dede, who was supposed to be like the tough guy, mm. gave me a yes. You know, he was convinced that, you know, I had what they were looking for, the talent, and I was better than um, people that had auditioned before me. But um, they gave me a no, and um, I cried. After that audition, I got on a plane to Abuja okay. for the same audition and I got there when it was time for me same to... Same West African yes. Idol. When it was time for me to audition, they were like, cut, 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 camera, cut. I'm like, what happened? They're like, you auditioned in Lagos, you can't audition. I'm like, where does it say on your website that one cannot audition in two places? Show me. Yeah. If you show me, then I'll go back to yeah. Lagos. And Dede was very kind, you know, to be on my side. Mm. And they told me, they were like, okay, you'll be the last person to audition. And they were like, over 2,000 yeah. people. I was like, no problem, I'll wait. You know, I scaled through and they dropped me again. It was after that, I, I cried mm. a, a great deal and I told myself, okay, let me just better myself. People advised me to join a band. Okay. And that was the defining moment for me mm. because I learned how to perform to a live audience. I learned how to sing different songs, mm. not just the songs that I like, but the songs that people would want to hear, to listen to and to dance to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after that, after some years, I stopped doing music. I owned my band. Mm. I owned the band before I stopped doing music. Okay. And then in 2013, my younger brother came up to me. He said, um, Niniola, there's this ad um, on the newspaper, in the newspaper saying that um, X Factor, the prize money is 45 million naira. You have to go and sing and bring this money home. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know how to sing anymore. I went for it. You know, I got a standing ovation from the judges and I was glad they dropped me again. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Maybe music is not just for me. Okay, I'll go to Project Fame. And if they give me a no, then I know that's, that's it, it yeah. for me. And um, Project Fame, from the very first audition, they told me, yeah, what we've been looking for. Hmm. And I'm like, are you sure? Really? Yeah, yeah. You know, I scaled through. I became a finalist on the show. And the rest and, is And it was interesting because there's been such a strong evolution, right? So now, when I think, when I look back at Niniola on mm -hmm. Project Fame, you were even wearing glasses then. Oh, yes, On I all was. the shows, uh -huh. you know? And now I look at you where you hold no bars. I mean, the confidence and the sexiness in which you ooze is, it's astounding and it's very different. How did you come into a place of owning your sexiness? 
Okay. And being comfortable with just expressing yourself. Okay. After Project Fame, I got my prize money and, you know, I decided to go headlong. And um, one thing that I took from Project Fame was, especially from Mommy J, was that be true to yourself. Okay. Be African. Be very African. Yeah. And I told myself, I can't sell myself if um, I don't sing in my mother tongue. And then nobody can, you know, correct me, you know, pick any faults. It's my playing ground, mm -hmm. you know. And um, being a woman, they tell us, you know, you can't say this, you can't do this. Excuse me. I am a woman. I can say whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Because women, when we gather, we talk about so many things. We talk about sex education. We talk about, you know, our career and all of that. And so I just wanted to sing about, you know, that taboo, mm. so to say, yeah. Let's, let's, okay, we're gonna go back to the dance moves, which you're gonna show me later, but let's talk okay. about singing about it. Okay. Your lyrics. Okay. Your writing in Yoruba, the lyrics are powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, take away the sexuality from it, but it, it's not just fluff lyrics. So let's talk a bit about your music process. Okay, so my genre of music, yeah. my root genre of music is Afro House. Mm -hmm. And um, it just happened, it's, it wasn't planned. I went to Saz and I told him to give me a hit song. You know, and he laughed at me. I was like, who is this one? You just came into the industry. Nobody knows you. We dropped Ibadi. Ibadi walked. Yeah. Ibadi and we decided down. to just stick to Afro House, you know. And um, about the lyrics, when I hear the beat, I need to love it. Okay. From the beat, I get emotions, feels from the beat. And then I vibe to it. After vibing, and I sit down and write the song proper. So, um... When it comes to the lyrics, mm. people say, oh my God, but you know the funny thing? It tickles you people. <laughs> yes. It's what do you mean it tickles us? And that's, and that's the reaction that I want. Yeah. And I'm getting it because yeah. prior to me writing all that, there was really nobody, um, no songwriter that was that direct yet um, conservative. If you listen to the music, or when you see Niniola, I'm not like all up in your face sexy. Okay. No, Nini is an introvert. Yeah. You know, funny enough. But well, that's your offstage persona. Yes, but through my music, mm -hmm. I can scream and be as loud as I want to be. Yeah. Your sister. Mm -hmm. You guys are both musicians. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, what, do you, what did you mean? When she first told you that she wanted to do music? Okay. And it's interesting because as I was doing research on you, I also mm -hmm. came up upon her videos. Mm -hmm. And there was this cute, sweet video of her singing a song Nini, for you. I love you. Lele, I know, and she I know, came I know, up with the whole song. <laughs> I mean, I know. growing up, what was the experience like? Were you guys always a musical family? Um, okay, let me put it this way. Um, she is like my number one in your lover. Okay. Because right from when um, we're growing up in the house, she'll, be, she'll always be with me. Like, Niniola, this so, okay, this is how the music thing started. Um, in the house, when I'm singing by the stairs, I'll call her, my um, cousins, and be like, okay, come and do backup for me. I forced them to do backup for okay. me. I used to force them to do backup. So, um, Teju actually, our last one, that one um, naturally has a singing voice. Okay. Tenny did not have a singing voice. Interesting. You know, she didn't. She just wanted to sing. And she'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, no, you're singing rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> she'd be like, no. It wasn't until years later she was telling me that, like, you know, I thought you were jealous of my, my voice. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't until I went out that people told me I was singing rubbish. Sing, yeah. You know, and then, she was in secondary school one day and she came up to me and she sang and said, it's a lie. It is not So her you. voice just changed? Yes. And I'm like, how? She's like, Nina, I've been singing for that. Because I want my voice to be like your own. So and I was like, wow, you sound good. And um, she was very happy coming from her big sister. You know, she admires me so much. And then she went to school. Yeah. And she was doing her comedy thing online. And then she told me, she was like, ah, you know, I love music. I'm oh. like, you know, just finish school first. And then yeah. you can do whatever you want to do. And now I'm super proud of her because that's my younger sister you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. nobody else. I'd rather my younger sister than anybody else. Of you understand? So. <laughs> you know, and she'd be like, Nini, when she came, she's like, ah, Nini, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you know what? Just do you. Be you. Be original. And don't be a fake. You know, everything will fall into place. Don't be in a hurry, yeah. you know. And um, I'm super, super proud of her. Are you guys going to do a collaboration? Do you know if we've what done do it think? already? Do you you've know done if we're going to do it? You've no, done it. Are you doing it? Is it coming? Stay close. Stay close. Well, I think that would be brilliant because you're both very, very talented. Thank and you. I know that you come from a really large family. Mm -hmm. You come from a polygamous family. Oh, yes. My father was you have, <laughs> you have, it's an interesting dynamic. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article and your three moms, mm -hmm are extremely close. Oh, yeah. How did that work? Okay, I grew up in a house of about 40 to 
Yes, about 40 people. Wow. Relatives, you know, his cousins, mm -hmm. and everybody was there. And uh, we couldn't even cook because there were too many. Mm. You guys used to cater? No, we had cooks. Okay. Like, you know, Fuji House of Promotion. Yeah. Uh -huh. My house was like that. Oh, wow. So there are 10 of you. There are 10 children. 10 children, but we had like cousins and all that. So what, we're about which one are you house. in the line of 10? I'm um, number six. You're number six. Yes. Who so it was you, fun growing who up. Who would you say you're closest to? Are you closest to the older ones or the younger ones? The funny thing is, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm okay. in the middle. Yeah. And, um, yeah, everyone can talk to me. Everyone feels like, oh, Nini's that person you can't talk to anytime. Yeah. So, yeah. What, do your, what does your family think? What does your mom think about your, industry, your business and being in the industry? My mom, she's enjoying it now. Because of the money? No, because people will call her and be like, ah, we saw Nini on oh. TV. She'll be like, eh. Mm, mm. <laughs> That's what she's enjoying now. But before now, she's telling me, um, Nini, music is a hobby. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It is just a hobby. Yeah. You go, go to school. And you'll be fine, but yeah. it's just the whole be singing in the house and you're fine, yeah. you know. And then when I started sneaking out of the house and all that, she was, she was worried, like, ah, this girl, you know. But um, now she's super proud of me. That's awesome. Very, very she should proud be of proud of you. Yes, and when I dropped Ibadi, I dropped Ibadi in March, um, 19, uh, I said 2014. Sorry, 2014. If I say 1918, <laughs> 2014, I didn't have money to shoot the video yeah. until November. So it was my mom. That gave me the money for the video so i love my mom so much yeah. that's so so yeah. i know your dad was very supportive of you before he passed and you were really really young mm -hmm. and i was reading an article and they said that he was assassinated yes it was i mean when that happened what how did that change your life okay so i'll say my dad started music for us in that house because he loved music yeah. and um he started the school band but um instruments drums i think mm -hmm. all of us in my family can play um play a tenor drum or side drum. And um, I used to dance, and then he bought um, a um, camcorder, mm. you know, and then he would tell me to dance. He recorded record it when his friends come over. He <laughs> play for them. Come and see my little baby. Yeah. He can dance, you know, he'll show me up. And um, I miss him today because, till today, because I was his favorite. Yeah. And funny as it may seem, he used to tell me everything, like everything, all his secrets mm. here. You know, but I miss him so much. Yeah. yeah. And how did you guys deal with his with his loss, especially in such a violent way? You yes, know? Um, by sticking together. Okay. Um, just by sticking together, praying to God, and just um, um, just sticking together. Was yeah. there anywhere, especially now that you're an adult, you know, when something like that happens and you're young, you kind of don't really know what's happening, but in your teenage years, how did you deal with? If, so, if, my, if, if I had a family member that was murdered, I don't know how I would really deal with the anger and the, the frustration at mm -hmm. the fact that someone did this. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with those kind of emotions? Okay, so you know how everyone is dealing with it in their own way. Yeah. And because you're dealing with stuff, how do you console the next person? Mm -hmm. So you're like left to deal with it on your own. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just caved in. Yeah. That's what happened to me. And considering the fact that I was his favorite, mm. he was the only one I, you know, I could talk to when he was alive, and now he's gone. Like, okay, so now mom see that is always beating me. Now yeah. I have to talk to her. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, I was always seeing him in my dreams. He was always coming to mm. to visit me, and when I told my mom, she was like, "Ma tell you, love, mm. <laughs> don't follow him." Don't follow him of course. <laughs> you know, but then you yeah. take me out, but. Um, it's a very, very sad situation. Yeah. I don't like thinking about it, but um, it's just um, at the end of the day, it's um, we'll meet in heaven. Yeah, yeah. And it just makes you realize that everything is vanity upon vanity. One yeah. day you'll die and you know, go. Yeah, well, I mean, he'd be so proud of you. Let's talk a little bit about music and specifically Magu. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, the collaborations with South Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know South Africans love house music. Mm -hmm. How did you get that collaboration specifically with Busisi Y, if I'm saying her Busisi name correct? Yeah, Busisi Y. How did, you, how did that happen? Okay. So, um, Maradona became number one yeah. in South Africa. And um, everyone was reaching out to me from South Africa. Oh, girl, how you doing? Okay, let's walk together. Blah, blah, blah. And so, I reached out to Busisi Y, you know, via um, Instagram yeah. DM. Babe, Alpha, I want to work with you. And she was super excited. Okay, send it over. And that's how it happened. Hmm. You know, and I sent her the beats. And then I went for a gig in South Africa. I saw her and I was way because to me, I'm like, yeah, I know her, you know. Yeah. And she was just looking at me like, what is this? And I was like, 
Neniola. She was like, oh, Neniola. Yeah. And you yeah. know, we just vibed. Then she, she told me, she was like, okay, you know what? I'll send you the best tomorrow. And she sent a whole song. Mm. Like when, when, I got, when I got the song back, I told my team, I said, get a fake bar. Only you love me. You know, I told you that to give me a verse. she wants to collect the yeah. song from you. Yeah. I told you to give me a verse and you gave me a, a whole, whole song. song. Like, that's hard work. She's very hard working. Yeah. She's energetic and I love her so much. So let's talk about Cobalt Music Group. Okay. Your songwriting alongside Ed Sheeran, Calvin Harris, 50 Cent, Lauryn Hill. I mean, how did that all happen? Oh, it feels good. Um, I'm a singer, a songwriter. <laughs> I'm proud to be yeah, a songwriter. Yeah. And, um, excuse me, and a dancer. So, um, Cobalt um, is a publishing company, and this is what they do. They help me with um, my songwriting, my publishing. They help me collect my money as well, mm -hmm. and they pitch me my music mm -hmm. for mu movies, games, and, and this is globally. different things. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And um, it was actually my manager, Michael, that mm -hmm. sorts the, um, the deal out, and it worked, you know, and um, I'm very happy. I've been doing a lot of writings for them, songwriting for them, and um, also they help with um, collaborations. Yeah. You know, because they have so many um, big international artists mm -hmm. that are signed to them. So, yeah. For your artists, for your fans who listen to your music abroad, do you find that they're comfortable with the fact that you sing in your band? And would you consider doing more English songs? Okay, so even Cobalt, when they send me stuff, they tell me, please, in your language, that's what we want. Wow. The international community wants me to sing in my language, not English. Okay. Because the thing is this, you cannot speak English better than the Englishman. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or even the pronunciation, mm. you will never get it like them. But singing in Yoruba, you know, it's my field. It, I'm free to play there and sing it anyhow. And even my Yoruba, yeah. I've, t I've twisted it in such a way that it sounds um, very exotic. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't understand what I'm saying, all you want to do is the feel of the song and the emotions that you know my voice conveys, mm -hmm. basically. All right, now I know that you're not only about the money, you're passionate about other things. So tell us a little bit about your foundation. Adopt a Child's Education. Uh, my father used to be a philanthropist yeah. and an education. He believed in you know, teaching people how to fish rather than, you know, give them fish. So I decided to step into his shoes and um, give out, you know, the little that I can. Mm -hmm. So this is what I did. I went back to his solo, Mirakari Estate. That's yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. And I went to six government primary schools and asked for five of their best students each. Mm -hmm. And they sat for an exam and I picked the best two, mm -hmm. which happened to be, thankfully, a boy and a girl. Okay. And then I give them a six-year scholarship, high school scholarship, which includes tuition, uniform, and books. That's wonderful. Now they are done with their junior secondary school, okay. and then SS1, and I'm super proud of them. And also, um, I give out books to you know public schools mm -hmm. and other things. And it's the little things that I'm doing, but I just hope that you know I can yeah, touch you know yeah. one person. Yeah, I think it's the person. little things that count, right? Yeah. Like if, imagine if multiple of us did that, we exactly. would cover all territory. Exactly. You do what it is that mm -hmm. you can and what it is that you're passionate mm -hmm. about. That's really awesome. You work. You're a philanthropist, but you're also a woman who has a heart. Oh, and who <laughs> also has emotions and feelings. Oh yes. And as of I know no where you're going. Don't worry. As of November, you were in a relationship last year. I'm still in one. You're st is it still the same one? Yes, it's still okay. the same. Okay. Are there like wedding bells? Am I gonna be able to dance at your wedding? Well, soon? not yet. Not yet. Mm. But is I'm not ready. You're not ready. Nah. Why aren't you ready? Because I'm still dancing. I'm doing music. You're still dancing and doing music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So wait, do you think that when you get married, you're going to not be able to do dancing and music? I'm still going to do it, but um, when I get married, I want to, you know, be a woman, married woman, you know, and have time for my family. Okay. That's what I'm saying. But right now, I'm not just ready to, to change my surname. You're not ready to change your surname? No. So why don't you keep your surname? Yeah, I can keep it, but um, I'll still, you know, have his name too. But I'm just not ready. You know, but ready. I, yes. what, what does he think about your... Sexiness. He likes it. Does he have a choice? Can he choose? No, but if he had a choice, would he ask you to be more? Mm, ah, this bomb I want it to just be for me. I don't know because he has not told. Maybe he's scared. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> has he come to your shows before? Nah, nah. Really? He's never been in the audience when you're dancing. Nah. 
He's not part of my world. Yeah, I know, but like... Because he's like, you know what? When they are, yeah, Nino Lad is a superstar for them. Yeah. Not for me. When we're together, it's, you know, just both of us. But do you also want to have kids? Of course. Yeah. Definitely. I want to have like 10. Just like your family. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just like your family. Just like your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Okay, before we let you go, we've been talking about dancing. I need, I want you to dance. Why do you want to dance, to dance for me? Why would I say that? Uh, I'm not so sexy. Uh, but I'm not so I don't like you. you. <laughs> but seriously, can we do a little bit of dancing? Um, you know I've been like a number one fan from like the gym. And I know. So like. But will you shake? I don't have anything God to shake, you. my sister. You have. Well, I can you do have. like, you know, maybe we can, you know what? You can teach me um, Zanku. So you tell me what I will teach you. Please, that's the easiest no, I'll word. I'll teach I... you what I want to teach. Okay, that's fine. No problem. You okay? You zanku and you shake. You want to run away from shaking. Zanku wants to take away all the shaking. <laughs> no. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm super nervous. You're gonna show me some dance moves. No foot booty shaking, but you shake. Just... Do you know what? I do know yeah, how to do, do one this, of do your this. moves. Yeah, do this I one. know how you... this one. Do this. I... See, see, see. <laughs> yeah, let's okay, do that first, then I'll show you okay. that. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. I'm wearing jeans, so. Eh, hey, yeah, bad, yeah, bad. Eh, hey, I do this one, this one. Okay. What are you doing? What yeah, are you hold. isolating? What is that? Just do that, shake this. this. My legs are skinny. Hey. Okay, they're shaking. Are they shaking? <laughs> okay, so it's small movement. Small. No, it depends, because you're wearing heels. Well, you're wearing heels. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, you go down. Okay. All right, okay. You're yeah, doing all right. Oh, yeah, go Eh, you can't turn it. Spending me, So, does your body just like move? So what do you think about it? I just move with the flow. Oh, okay. As you're flowing, I will let you flow. <laughs> I'm already tired. We had to cut because I was out of breath from that small <laughs> dancing, which shows me how hard it is. But I'm really, really excited for you this year. Thank Are you going to be releasing another album? Yeah, still very young. I don't know. Okay. Just <laughs> singles? I don't know. But you like... don't you know now. Are we getting another thing? Because I know Designer just came out. Oh, yes. And there's the video will be dropping very soon. Ah, that's awesome. Yes. Congratulations. I'll see you Thank soon. You. Thank Next you. time I see you, I will, in spirit, just give you a pat. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's the only thing I can do. Ah. It's different. When she, it's different when she does it, <laughs> guys. This has been the juice with Niniola. Make sure that you comment down below and let us know which one of Niniola's songs do you love the most and gets you grooving all the time. We want to make sure that we hear from you from all of our social media platforms. My name is Balali, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Juice. Bye. Bye.